Um, what are you doing? Oh, just uh, making a little snack. Snack being microwave popcorn? Um, yeah. Dude, that bag is loaded with chemicals. Some even being linked to ED. What? In, in that bag? Yeah. You mean like that ED? I don't know any other kind. Oh, oh my God. I, I've been eating this kind of stuff for years. Yeah, this type of stuff and processed food have been affecting men, women, and children for years. Wait, wait, and women? Yeah. What ED are you talking about? Endocrine disruptors. Ah. Oh man. Dude, I thought you were talking about erectile dysfunction. What? No. This is much worse. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to a, another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. This week, I am going to try and convince you all that today is the day to start shoring up the environment where you spend upwards of 90% of your time in. You heard that right. We humans spend 90% of our lives indoors, shielded from the environment that we've evolved in for hundreds of thousands of years. And if that weren't having enough of an effect on our everyday health, let's add the fact that there is a pretty high probability that our indoor environment is riddled with hidden toxins and chemicals that could very well be compromising our cellular, metabolic, physiological and psychological health. Uh, yeah. And listen, I'm not gonna tell you to go full nature nomad and exile to the deepest depths of the closest forest. Although that would make a rather interesting nature therapy vlog. Right, production team? Having a roof over our head has clearly been advantageous to our health, longevity and overall survival. The goal here is to maximize present day health and long-term longevity while finding a common ground and taking advantage of the wildly abundant technology that we've all been gifted by simply being alive during this prosperous age. And to not have to go, you know, full Lord of the Flies anytime soon. I'm watching you production team. So in the next 12 minutes and 64 seconds, we are gonna cover what some of the modern day contaminants lurking in our environment are, why they're bad for biological business, and lastly, how we can change that and put ourselves in the very best position for short-term and long-term health prosperity. Oh, oh my, do you see what time it is? No, damn it, production team. You're not supposed to hold up a sign of what time it is. You're supposed to say, oh, what time is it? Doesn't anyone read the script anymore? Every week, every week. We're gonna start with a little story time. Way back when, when I was a fridge solely full of condiments college student, me and my roommates lived off a strip diet of egg noodles, ketchup, fruit snacks, and popcorn. Basically whatever had the highest taste to work ratio. Tasted the best with the least amount of work. As I stated before, popcorn was a fan favorite. And what's not to like? Bag, microwave, pop, crunch, perfect. And then I stumbled my way into a health sciences elective my senior year. That introduced me to something called endocrine disruptors. Mm. And in this class, I was tasked with writing a paper on one of a few choice subjects. And without having a clue of what any of them were, I chose DD, which I later found out to be endocrine disruptors. And all I can say is, oh baby. Being a college athlete, I always thought I had a pretty good grasp on what being healthy was. But at the same time, being a college athlete, I was also blatantly and unknowingly ignorant. This little research endeavor gave me my first glimpse into how everything that we put on and in our body has both a direct and indirect impact on our present day and future state health. The fact that chemicals from our environment, food, 
and common consumer products could disrupt the regulation of hormones and drive cellular dysfunction and disease was some eye-opening And guess where all of these chemicals were? In my popcorn. And that night, being the good Samaritan and friend that I am, I went into all of my six roommates' rooms and confiscated all of the microwave popcorn and some other snacks, all in the name of health. And I guess you could say 10 years later, things have escalated a little bit. Now, you may be asking, what's the big deal with popcorn and all the other common household items we use? Let's explore common items in your everyday life. First, the corn. Preservatives and flavoring in most microwave popcorn bags have been tested and proven to contain toxic chemicals that have been linked to developmental problems, hormone disruption, organ damage, and more. One of the main culprits here are PFAS, polyfuryl alkyl substances. Oh, for, for me? This just in, there seems to be a warrant for my arrest from the pronunciation police, so, uh, Let's see how much more damage we can do before they get me. <laughs> Adding to that, they contain a chemical found in the artificial butter flavoring called diacetyl, which has been linked to several lung diseases and even has a coined term called popcorn lung. Now, when this was discovered, it began being phased out by many popcorn manufacturers in the early 2000s. But its replacement, acetylpropionol, has been linked to, you guessed it, breathing problems. Now listen, this isn't a vendetta against popcorn. I love popcorn. Everyone likes popcorn. Great healthy snack when it's not in a microwavable bag. But this is really just an example, diving deep into how one food and the chemicals in one food can potentially cause so much disruption in our body. And it also brings up a good point and a common theme. The replacements from said toxic chemicals don't necessarily mean they're any better. A better assumption would really be there hasn't been strong enough evidence against said replacement to convicted of any health crimes. Yeah. And the question that I like to ask is why is the chemical actually needed and what is the potential healthy replacement? So pushing popcorn to the side, what are some other common household items that we should be aware of here? Let's go through a little list. First, air fresheners. Here's a fun fact. If you can smell it, it's probably in your lungs. Many air fresheners and sprays contain formaldehyde, petroleum, and aerosol propellants, all biologically damaging. Next, be aware of all things plastic. Phthalates are a common chemical that are added to plastics to make them flexible and bendy. They have been shown to potentially damage the liver, kidney, lungs, and reproductive systems. Another common one is bisphenol A, or BPA which is commonly used in clear plastic and in the lining of things such as cans. This is a proven endocrine disruptor. It mimics estrogen in the body and drives cellular dysfunction. But also be aware of those BPA-free items because its replacement, BPS, hasn't shown to be any better. So you wanna aim for glass and stainless steel where you can. Then we look at detergents, disinfectants, drain cleaners, toilet cleaners, Nose unclock, no, oh, just those four then. Antibacterial cleaners typically contain fragrances, surfactants, and pesticides. The surfactants break up the dirt, the pesticides kill the bacteria, and the fragrance makes everything smell just dandy. And if you know me, a bacteria and microbiome junkie, anything that aims to and tries to destroy the natural biodiversity on and inside of us, needs to be looked at very, very closely and have a very, very strong reason why you would be using that product. Because a healthy biodiversity is one of the keys to health and longevity. So a common toxin in these products is a chemical called dioxin, which is found heavily in detergents. This chemical is often absorbed through the skin from the fabric that's been exposed to it. And there has been a link between dioxin and cancer, kidney and lung conditions as well. Next. We have cosmetics, deodorants, and body care items. A lot going on here. Many of them contain fragrances, heavy metals, and a lot of other questionable ingredients, putting the user in a compromised position for hormonal dysfunction and 
cellular damage. A simple rule, if you wouldn't eat it, don't put it on you. Then, the family rug. Specifically, older stain resistant items like carpets. A growing body of evidence has shown that there are potential adverse health impacts associated with the aforementioned PIFA exposure. These toxic chemicals that have been sold to you to be a stain resistant benefit can migrate into the air, dust, food, soil, and water. Not cool. And then we can't forget the item that we spend eight hours each day breathing in. Mattresses and their less comfy cousin sofa. Until recently, almost all upholstered furniture contained industrial grade flame retardants. And these, just like those stain resistant chemicals, migrate up into the air, up into your food, up into the water and everywhere else. And especially easy if you have your face smack dab down in them for eight hours a night. So if your mattress or sofa is over 10 years old, it may be a good health investment to upgrade. And last, but certainly not least, the things that we willingly put inside of our body, what we eat and what we drink. There's a lot here. And instead of spending a whole hour on this one, I will point you to a full video dedicated solely to this topic right here. Long story short, many of the household favorites and snacks are loaded with a whole bunch of crap from synthetic chemicals to binding agents, artificial flavors, and even pesticides all bad for biological business. So with all that, let's explore how all of the aforementioned items are driving that cellular and metabolic dysfunction and killing your internal vibe and thus your long-term longevity vibe, the cellular and metabolic consequences. So here we're gonna go through eight general ways daily household and environmental items could be sabotaging your cellular and metabolic health. Now. These are generalized across an array of different toxin interactions that you would commonly see. Obviously, there are a lot of different conditions that go into how a certain interaction, how a certain environmental or household toxin can drive the cellular and metabolic dysfunction that we're about to cover. But here are eight general things that could very well be happening. First way these toxins are killing our internal vibe is by driving oxidative stress and inflammation. And when this is chronic, meaning continuous, it basically accelerates anything nefarious going on on the inside. Next, they cause genetic alteration and mutations, AKA DNA damage. This is an accumulation of DNA errors that can multiply and cause things such as cancer or chronic disease. Then we have epigenetic alterations. These toxins can change the expression or on off switch of our genes in a less than optimal way and disrupt regular function in the body. Moving on, mitochondrial dysfunction. Big longevity liability here. This is when our cellular power station breaks down and leaks. And listen, I don't care what world you're in, leaky power station, not good. This right here can impair cellular function and drive inflammation. Yikes. Next, a reminder, endocrine disruption, or when chemicals in the environment disrupt the regulation of hormones and contribute to disease. Think popcorn. Then we have things such as interrupted cellular communication, when signaling receptors, cell communication, and even neurotransmission are impaired or disrupted. Next, my favorite topic, as you guys know, the gut. These toxins have shown to disrupt the delicate balance of microorganisms in and on us, opening us up to an array of issues and overall gut dysfunction, much more in these videos here. And finally, impaired nervous system function. Pollutants from these items can reach this five pound mushy membrane and disrupt things such as cognition. What did you say? Yeah, it's a doozy of a list. But listen, not all environmental exposure is harmful. There's a fair amount that is good and even essential for health. So let's talk about what you can do. Finding a healthy balance. In most cases, you live where you live. You made the decision to live where you currently are for a plethora of reasons, work, family, income, scenery, the list goes on and on. It's a pretty big decision or else there wouldn't be all those house hunting shows on HGTV. Don't ask me how I know. Pr production team watches it nonstop. I wish they would do some work, but. And sometimes you don't get a choice at all. You have a roof over your head and that's all that matters. So here are some ways to optimize your interaction with both your macro and micro environment. 
First, if you haven't guessed, aim for all natural products. Survey your home, apartment, and room for all cleaning, cooking, and self-care items. They may smell nice, but many times they contain harsh chemicals that are counterproductive in this game of health. Remember, your skin is just not a solid shield that protects and blocks all from the outside world. It's porous. It absorbs and interacts with everything. I'm going to reiterate my personal rule. If I can't eat it without harm, I'm not putting it on me. So put yourself in the best position to win. There are a lot of natural health oriented consumer product companies out there and it is a growing industry. Do your research, spend the time. This is an investment worth making. Next, bring nature to you. Unless you live in a log cabin in the middle of the forest, there's a good chance that you could use a few plants in your living space. Up until a few thousand years ago, we used to live outside with them. We've evolved with plants. They filter our air and increase that oh so important biodiversity in our home. So get a few plants, open the windows when you can, and don't forget to water them. Side note, increased biodiversity in the home has also shown to be beneficial to fight against dust and other harmful chemicals. So to offset some of those harmful toxins that could potentially be in the house, get more biodiverse, baby. Next, food. Not gonna lie, this is a complicated one, but let's keep it simple. Aim for as much real whole foods as possible, organic where you can, to mitigate your risk as much as possible from pesticides that we know are bad, like glyphosate. Eating good, real nourishing food will also do a few other things like providing your body with key nutrients to detoxify itself, help build up your internal defenses, and fight oxidative stress, leveraging things such as the phytochemicals in plants. Another reminder, we cover all this in depth here. Then leverage that thing called nature. There are pros and cons to all environments. So identify your current situation and supplement with a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly trip to a new environment and reap some of its benefits. Go find a forest, go find a beach, go find some fresh air, go find some sunlight and go hang out. It will help increase your biodiversity both internally and externally, thus putting you in a better position for health overall. And lastly, last tip, head your bets and double down on things such as good quality sleep and exercise. These will put your body in the very best position to tolerate and dispose of environmental insults. And guess what? Both of them, free 99. So use them. I'll leave you with this. We are all in a unique position of living in the greatest, most opportunistic era ever. And often we overlook the fact that we are animals living in an ecosystem, impacting and interacting with our environment. Sometimes for the better, but many times for the worst. Mastering and optimizing the space where you spend the majority of your time is one of the best investments that you can make. It certainly has enormous ROI return on investment potential over the course of 80 years and is one of the essential pieces to the puzzle of owning your health. As always, let me know what comments, questions, any random thoughts you have down in the comments below. Now, if you'll excuse me, me and the production team need to go work on our new Nature Exile reality show. I think we'll call it Lost. What? What do you mean it's been done before?